Mr. Ryan Hicks is a writer and stand-up comedian originally from Texas, where he's been creating, performing, and producing now in San Diego for over 15 years, but the most endearing gift he's ever given me is as my roommate. Please welcome Ryan Hicks, everybody. As a teenager, it was always hard to find the right place to do the wrong thing. Not that it wasn't easy to break the law, it was just difficult not to get caught. My friends and I started doing drugs at a young age, and not just drugs, psychedelic drugs, and not just psychedelic drugs to get high, but to have an experience to connect with ourselves and each other and the world around us, and at 13 and 14 years old, this was a bit tricky. But after a couple years, we kind of got it down to a science. Wait till parents were gonna be out of town, drive around in our cars, go camping, be at one with nature in the middle of nowhere, and then every once in a while, we'd rent a hotel room. Specifically, a cheap motel room, but it was great. It was uh, this little vacation into an adult world that we'd only really experienced as kids, where we could sort of be protected from all the other stuff we always had to deal with as teenage drug users. The hotel was a safe space wherein we could do incredibly dangerous things. And we'd always decorate the room. We'd put up flags and tapestries and lights and lamps and bring a guitar, bring a boom box, really elevate the vibe and then get incredibly high on drugs. There was always booze and pills and weed and then either mushrooms, acid, ecstasy, all of the above. On Thanksgiving of 2001, we checked into a Motel 6 and decked it out like we always did, took a bunch of mushrooms, smoked, drank, it was great until we ran out of rolling papers. Now, we could have just smoked bowls out of the pipe, but when you're in the mood and you're out of your mind, you end up at a gas station. This was a risky trip, literally. Uh, we are full of psilocybin. It is midnight in Amarillo, Texas on a Thursday. And I'm trying not to think about this as I sit waiting for my friend in the parking lot of the gas station. Out of nowhere, he comes running out, jumps in the car and says, we gotta get out of here now. Without thinking or asking, I just slam it, fly, speed away from a potential crime scene. And he goes, it's crazy, man, I was in line. And then these two guys recognize me. They're like older and they look kind of hardcore and they're, they're like talking to me. And I, I told them we were hanging out at a hotel partying and they wanted to like come like, like chill with us. And we're like, what'd you say? And he goes, don't, don't worry, man. I lied and ran away. <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, what did you say to them? And he goes, don't worry. I told them we were at the Motel 6 on Coulter, room 143. So we're at the Motel 6 on Bell, room 134. Why would you lie so close to the truth? <laughs> and he goes, I'm tripping on mushrooms. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, so we kind of laugh it off. There's holes in his story, but who cares? We get back, we roll a bunch of joints. We do this thing where we'd hot box the bathroom. It's where you turn the shower as hot as it'll go, build up the steam, block off the cracks in the door with towels, and then smoke as much weed as you can before you pass out. And um, so we get through all the joints, and now we're really in the second wave of the mushrooms, all right? And about a half hour goes by, and then we hear kind of a commotion a few doors down. It's a hotel, it's a holiday, whatever. But then it gets a little closer. We hear banging and, and voices, and we're thinking, ah, there's no way. But then it's next door, and we know it's the guys from the gas station. 
So we turn the lights off and we get on the ground right as they make it to our room. And they're banging on the door and they're yelling. They did not appreciate being lied to and fleed from. So they're banging on the door. They're yelling. And we are freaking the fuck out. All right. We are very high. And they are screaming and pounding on the door. And we're frozen and silent. And then finally, one of us goes, <coughs> lowers his voice, pretends to be a businessman from out of town. They don't appreciate the additional lie. So this makes them angrier. And also, my car, the one that drove away from them out of the gas station parking lot, is right in front of the room. So <laughs> why they knocked on the other doors, who knows? But uh, we're caught. So my friend keeps pretending to be this businessman. They keep not believing it and getting angrier. And then finally, he does something that none of us in our teenage lives had ever thought to do. He threatens to call the cops on them. <laughs> and it works. They start to back off. They start to get quieter. A few more choice words, and then they're gone. We wait, kind of look through the peephole, peek out the curtain, you know. No sign of them. So we let a couple more minutes pass, and then kind of slowly get up, turn the lights on, assess the damage. You know, we're all kind of fried, very, very disorienting. And we always had something ready for the come down from the psychedelics. Tonight it was pills. What better time than now? You know, let's equalize. We all take some pills. We drink some alcohol. We get our cigarettes out. And I remember watching my friend. He had an American spirit hanging off of his lower lip. And right when he flicked his lighter, at the exact moment that I could see the flame, there's a giant explosion of glass and metal. And I knew that the guys were shooting into the room. So we all start to pile back into the bathroom. And as I'm running behind my friends, I look into the room and they're trying to break down the door. And the only thing keeping it closed is the little latch and then my friend who lied to them at the gas station throwing himself against it. And then I'm in the bathroom. I'm on top of my friends and I'm looking for blood. Just any sign of, of injury, but we're in there for just a few seconds before we hear, we got to get out of here now. So we come out and the room is destroyed it's, there's debris everywhere, the alarm's going off, lights are flashing, it's, it's just chaos. We don't think to take down the decorations or hide the drugs, we just run out of the room. But as I'm going through the door, I look at the bed and there's a giant metal trash can that the guys had picked up from the parking lot and thrown through the window. No guns, no bullets. But at that point, it didn't really matter. So we're in my car, speeding away from an actual crime scene. And my friend in the front seat is throwing up into his hoodie. And we notice that we are missing somebody. So I go to turn around to go back to the room. But then we spot him about a half a block down the road, barefoot in a dead sprint. So we pull up next to him, and he's gone. He's just pure fear. And he doesn't even recognize us or, like, register what's happening. And we're screaming at him. He finally snaps out of it and jumps in the car. And then we're realizing this is not over. This is not something we can run away from. It will find us like they found us. We have to do something now. Our stuff is there. The room's in our name. The cops are going to get called. What do we do? And then the same friend that pretended to be the businessman pulls out the wild card again. And he goes, we should call the cops. We're like, are you fucking crazy? We can't call the cops. He goes, they're going to get called anyway. If we do it, then we're the victims. We're not hiding anything. It's, it's our only move. We're like, it, he's got a point. We don't really have another choice. So he calls the cops, 911. This was unbelievable to us. 
We are voluntarily contacting the authorities. And instead of pretending to be a businessman, he puts on his kid voice, scared kid voice. Me and my friends were in a hotel, and it got vandalized, and we ran away. The cop said, oh, we already got that call. We have people on their way. It's a good idea to leave. Give us some time. We'll secure the scene. You can come back, get your things, fill out the report. So far, so good. Except we and the room are still full of illegal substances. <laughs> so we pull back into the parking lot of the hotel, and there's crime scene tape around the room. There's a bunch of cop cars. Their lights are on and flashing. Probably would have been pretty trippy if we'd been able to appreciate it in a <laughs> parallel universe or something. So a bunch of my friends stay in the car, understandable, and I get out since I'm driving. My friend whose name was on the room gets out, and then a third friend whose only job was to go in and get as much stuff hidden before the cops notice it. The room was destroyed, so it makes sense they wouldn't have necessarily seen it. So he goes in, and he's just bottles of alcohol little jars of weed, a Tupperware with mushrooms in it. He's taking ashtrays full of roaches and just pouring them into his backpack. Just <laughs> anything. And we're talking to the cop. Now, I'm sure a lot of you and most, some people, try psychedelics as teenagers. You have not tripped until you have done it this far away from a police officer's face <laughs> who is judging everything you say and do. So he's, he's talking to us, and he goes, what are you guys doing here? He said, well, we, uh, it's Thanksgiving, and our families are all in town, and we wanted to give them more room at our parents' houses, so we got a hotel. <laughs> he's kind of, he's, he's with us, he's going, okay, all right. And he looks and he goes, what's with all the, what's with all the stuff, the flags and the lights? Well, th this is our first time away from our families over the holidays, and we just thought it would make us more comfortable. <laughs> and he buys it. He doesn't really have any reason not to. It's just a random crime, you know? We get the rest of our stuff, we finish the report, and we get away with it. I never heard from the cops Never heard from the hotel about the damages, and I never saw those two guys again. A lot of these stories, but the interesting thing about this one is that pretending to be adults is kind of what got us into the mess in the first place, but then just being kids is what got us out of it. Thank you. Ryan Hicks, everybody! I'm going to wear my running shoes the next time I have to do this job. Our next performer, please welcome, is a man who lives for stories like plants live for sunshine. He feeds on them, it nourishes his soul, he seeks them out, uh, and he'll probably talk to you about getting yours on his show. Please welcome the host of Long Story Short, David Latham. <laughs> 